Welcome back to the Sentinel Report. Alex Newman, your friendly host here, and uh, very honored today to have a returning guest. His name is Seth Gruber. Uh, he's got a lot of credentials. Uh, we won't spend the whole segment going through his biography. It's phenomenal. But I will say, uh, I believe he is the most articulate spokesman for the cause of life in the United States today. I don't know of anybody who can articulate as clearly and as forcefully why we must stop the mass murder of our babies. Uh, he's just, uh, he's on another level. Uh, it talks real fast, so you got to pay close attention, but he's got a new project out. And uh, when I heard about this a few months ago, I said, Seth, we got to get you on the program. We said, well, give me a minute. <laughs> We're working on it. So very glad we have him today. Uh, a little bit about the project and a little bit about Seth. He's with the White Rose Resistance. This is a ministry that he uh, founded and continues to lead. Uh, he'll talk a little bit about that. But his project, the 1916 Project, shows what happened with our so-called progressive culture shift. He's got a documentary. He's got a book to go with it. And uh, he is just uh, an incredible godsend when it comes to protecting the lives of the unborn, which, frankly, uh, you know, if we don't protect the lives of the unborn, what are all the other issues for, right? If we can't get this one right, <laughs> we're going to get everything wrong. Seth, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, tell us about the 1916 Project before we air the uh, trailer for the documentary. Yeah, thank you, um, Alex. I appreciate your voice, bro. We got to hang out more. You're, you're a warrior. The feeling's mutual. Dude, um, we've been lied to. That's it, Alex. We've been lied to. Um, there's a hidden history um, to the secular moral revolution. Um, there are lots of dirty little secrets of the sexual revolution that you're not supposed to know about, patriot, Christian, uh, because you might start living differently. Um, they'll call you an Alex Jones conspiracy theorist. They'll uh, call you an ultra MAGA domestic terrorist, whatever the new phrase is, Alex. Uh, the point is, is I wrote a 170 page book with something like 220 or something citations to back up every claim um, about how this culture was created that you're going to want to be able to make Christian conservative patriot. Um, about this quote unquote progressive culture shift. And we'll let you play the trailer, but he here's the bottom line. It's not the 1619 project, Alex, that explains our allegedly upside down, super bigoted racist culture. It's the 1916 project. More evil flows from that date that continues to deteriorate freedom, liberty, life parental rights, babies, children, the social fabric than ever flowed from 1619. 1916, brother, is when Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, opens her first clinic. Well, uh, I want to air that trailer in just a moment, Seth, but tell us a little bit about Margaret Sanger. I mean, you and I uh, have both been talking about her for a long time, but a lot of Americans don't even know who she is. The ones who do know, eh, this is a birth control lady, you know, maybe founder of the Planned Parenthood. We don't like abortion, so we maybe don't like Margaret Sanger. But she was much more than that. <laughs> she was big into eugenics. She was big into all kinds of yeah, evil, right. evil things. Talk to us a little bit about Margaret Sanger before we go to that clip. Yeah, Alex. Well, yeah. So Christians and conservatives, they tend to want to deal in bits and pieces with worldviews, politics and ideologies. This is a, an observation from Francis Schaeffer. But that's not how the world works. There's an underlying worldview to sort of all of the secular isms and the secular progressive culture, quote unquote, today. And when you master that worldview and when you understand that this is a battle of worldviews, dare I say religions, uh, the whole picture becomes much clearer. So you can't just take out the Planned Parenthood box <laughs> off the shelf, Alex, and say, we shouldn't kill babies. Okay, yeah, praise God, duh. Okay, if you, if you, if you can't grasp that, I don't really trust you to babysit my kids or run this republic, by the way. Not, and then we put the, the box back on the shelf, Alex, and then we take out the transgenderism, gender theory, John Money box, and let's talk about how all that happened, and then let's put that back on the shelf, and then let's take out the critical race theory box and the Frankfurt School and Antonio Gramsci and the strategy of the robes, and oh, right, Pete Buttigieg's dad, uh, Joseph Buttigieg, is the one that translated Gramsci's prison letters at, for American leftists that became the basis of the Frankfurt School, but I digress. Let's put that box back on the shelf. And no, guys, that's not how it works. Okay, like notice how these worldviews and movements tend to coalesce and how all of the same people kind of push forward the same different um, uh, unfoldings of our culture of death today. They sit on each other's boards, they celebrate the same stuff, they retweet each other's stuff, and they all fund the same crap. Guys, that's not a coincidence. And, and so what we've done with this book and film is we said, you need to understand that Margaret Sanger might be, brother, the most 
most successful revolutionary leftists of the 20th century, whose like fingerprints and legacy on today's insanity is probably greater than anyone else that spawned out of the 20th century, except maybe Alfred Kinsey. Um, and she's the founder of Planned Parenthood. Today, Planned Parenthood is the second largest provider of cross-sex hormones and puberty blockers for America's gender-confused youth. Uh, Planned Parenthood is not an abortion organization. They're a culture of death organization, uh, and they will rot the republic in any way that they can think of. And so we, we go back and we figure out how all that happened. But yeah, Margaret Sanger, she said things like, um, the mass of Negroes, particularly in the South, are still breeding carelessly and disastrously. End quote. Oh, whoa, what the heck? Uh, she had a Negro Project director that said, there is a great danger that we will fail because the Negroes think that this is a plan for their extermination. So let's appear to let the colored run it. Oh, yikes. That's not a very nice line. Uh, Margaret Sanger called for sterilization and segregation camps for people that she deemed unfit to reproduce with bad genes. Uh, she once said, Alex, apply a stern and rigid policy of sterilization and segregation to that grade of population whose progeny is tainted and whose inheritance is already such that objectionable traits may be transmitted to offspring, end quote. I could go on for another five minutes. You've been lied to about the patron saint of feminism, and Planned Parenthood proved it in 2020 when they canceled their founder, took her name off their building, and caved to pressure from Black Lives Matter Incorporated, and finally admitted what conservative had been saying for 100 years that Margaret Sanger was a racist eugenicist pile of crap. <laughs> I love it. Um, nice, uh, concise summary there. And and you're so right, Seth. I, I wish people could understand this. This worldview, this poisonous worldview um, is, is the root of not just the mass slaughter of babies, but so many other evils, the, the racism, the eugenics, the, the sexual revolution. Yeah. Uh, Margaret Sanger was a huge proponent of the sex revolution long before it actually came to pass. So she wanted to liberate yeah. sex from the confines of marriage. Uh, so That's many right. wicked things. So let, let's uh, roll that trailer real quick. Let's let the folks get a sense of what this is, and we'll come back in just a moment to break it down further. All right. Yeah. So I guess the trailer will be inserted here in post. Correct. Okay. And uh, are, are they going to be able to flash back and forth between the screens, me and Seth, once uh, in post? or? Yes, sir. That'll also be done in post. Okay, perfect. Um all righty. So uh, we'll come back from the trailer. And Seth, then I'm going to ask you, uh, you know, how do people go watch this movie? We'll talk about the book briefly. We'll get into the White Rose, Rose Resistance. And then uh, you can tell people how to connect with you, follow you, uh, get involved in, in all of this stuff. So, all right. Wow, that was powerful, Seth, uh, and desperately, desperately needs to be said. I cannot wait to go see this myself. So uh, if, if I understand correctly, this is going to be shown in churches all across the country. That's the only way to watch it, uh, at least at the beginning. How do people find That's out right. where this is playing near them, or how do people bring it to their own church? Yeah, it will be premiered online for the world later this year, Alex, um, and we'll be doing a massive you know, public relations drop when that comes. But my ministry, the White Rose Resistance, is a ministry by and for the church, Alex, by and for the church. My, my goal is to put myself out of a, out of a job, actually. Um, I don't believe it's, it's the job of another 501c3 to end child killing or abortion in America. I actually think it's the role and job of the church because the pro-life movement used to go by another term, Alex, in antiquity. Um, Christendom. Yeah, the pro-life movement used to be called Christendom. Um, the church was behind every effort to rescue uh, infants that were abandoned to die. Um, and I mean, the Polynesians, uh, the Persians, the Egyptians, uh, the Greeks, the ancient Hindus and Arabs, like all of these people found ways to either kill infants or actually kill babies in the womb through herbal or medicinal abortifacients or, or pushing or pumping things directly into the womb through the birth canal. I mean, weird, weird stuff like abortions and infanticide go back a long, long time. And it wasn't another 501c3 that was like, give us your money so we can save children. It was bro. It was just Christians in their local communities overflowing with the love of the gospel and the belief that these are image bearers of God saying we're going to actually do something about that and we're not going to like put together a nonprofit. Like, and bro, I'm saying this as the CEO of a nonprofit. I think there's too many nonprofits <laughs> in America because I think they're doing the work that the blood bought bride of Christ used to do. And so because my ministry is by and for the church, um, we decided to screen this film firstly in the churches of America. So any church in America can screen it right now at your church right now. 
go to www.the1916project.com. The numbers don't spell it. So the1916project.com. Press host a screening, fill out the form, and my team will get back to you. Uh, if you want to see where we're screening, press attend a screening and see our dates. Hundreds of churches are lining up. We just did one in Ireland. We're getting requests from Australia and South America. My team's having to work on translations for the premiere later this year. Uh, and so it's a very powerful 75-minute full-length documentary. And uh, you're going to learn some shocking, jaw-dropping, rip-your-face-off truth bombs um, that I found most conservative pro-life Christians, Alex, don't even know. And I'm talking about culture warriors like you, Alex, and you're, you're one of the more informed brothers I've ever met. But like I meet warriors in the culture war and they like they never even heard this stuff. And they're like, Seth, I've never heard this stuff. Right. It's, exactly. It's not your fault. You've been lied to. Okay. There's been an agenda to kind of curate the more uncomfortable aspects of the secular moral revolution. And everything I couldn't fit in my film, I put into the book. The book is also called The 1916 Project. And the subtitle, Alex, is The Lying, the Witch, and the War We're In. The Lying, the Witch, and the War We're In. The 1916 Project. And so um, you can pre-order this right now at the1916project.com forward slash book. Uh, it's also on Amazon. But hey, don't give your money to baby-hating, Christian-hating Amazon. Uh, pre-order it from our ministry and put your money to a pro-life cause. And um, so you're going to learn things like... Um, the founding board member of Planned Parenthood, Lothrop Stoddard, was a high official of the Massachusetts KKK. He was actually their grand wizard. He wrote a book called The Rising Tide of Color Against White World Supremacy. He wrote another book called The Revolt Against Civilization, The Menace of the Underman. And uh, Alfred Rosenberg, the Nazi Party's chief racial theorist, appropriated the German term Untermensch, Untermensch um, from the English version of Lothrop Stoddard's um, book on eugenics called the menace of the underman actually alex um this will crack you up this was over 300 dollars. you cannot find it online this is why i'm a homeschool adhd research weird nerd um there's <laughs> the name lothrop stoddard right there he's a founding board member of planned parenthood when it was launched in 1921 this is the german translated edition from 1925. Here's what this demon looked like. Um, this was shipped. I bought this from Germany. It just arrived. It took over a month to get here. It was over $300, and it was the only edition I could find online. Published in Munich in 1925. The English version of this is The Revolt Against Civilization, The Menace of the Underman. So that last word here is, is how the Germans translated the English word underman. Notice what it says there, Untermenschen. Well, Untermenschen is the title of uh, Heinrich Himmler's famous Nazi propaganda book. And translated by the Nazis, it meant subhuman to refer to the Jews. That word, brother, Untermensch, did not begin to be used by the Nazis to describe those they were exterminating until Lothrop Stoddard, Margaret Sanger's first founding board member, had his book translated into German. Yes, you just heard me rightly, conservative. The Nazis got the term subhuman from Planned Parenthood's first board member, a position he held for years. And he was the only American to be invited by the Nazis to the Third Reich after he rose to power. He's the only American to have had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Goebbels, Himmler, Fritz Sauckel, Robert Ley. Oh, and who else? Um, oh, that's right, the Fuhrer, Adolf Hitler in 1939 and he wrote about it in his book 1940 about his drooling uh man crush on the nazis and how he wished american eugenicists would have as much courage as the eugenicists did in germany guys that's the founding board member of planned parenthood i've only scratched the surface if you want to learn about this and more host a screening of the film at your church right now the 1916project.com and pre-order dozens of these for your maybe woke, weak, or wimpy pastor, um, or the liberal family members and loved ones in your life. Uh, hey, tell them you'll give them 50 bucks if they'll read it and take them out to dinner. It's not that long of a book. This will change minds and hearts. And the film, honestly, Alex, the film has the potential to change the voting block of Black America um, permanently. Um, once Black America sees this film, which we all know that if the Democrats don't have the Black vote, they don't win elections. Once, once Black America understands and wakes up to the agenda that has been created by the Sangers and her ilk, we can fundamentally change the voting block of America forever.
Wow. There, there's so much there, Seth. I agree with you a thousand percent. <laughs> this yeah. is huge. Um, you know, our, our church does have signs outside of our church saying vote no on four. That's the abortion amendment here in the state of Florida. But every That's church right. needs to be on the front lines of this battle, just like Seth said. Uh, Seth, the website one more time. And how do people find the White Rose Resistance? What's the best way to follow you guys' excellent work? Yeah, we're on Instagram. Um, I'm on Twitter. We're, we're on YouTube. I'm um, on TikTok, um, Facebook. Um, but our website is the white rose dot life, the white rose dot life. And we would ask you to be consider becoming an ally. We do a lot to mobilize our allies and supporters to go be the resistance because they're the solution. My ministry is not the solution. We're here to be your equipping trainers, cheerleaders, and get you out onto the field of battle. But it's not my job to end abortion. It's the church's job. And we're here for the church. And so if you go to the white rose dot life and you sign up at $35 a month as a supporter, we call that an ally. You get a battle box in the mail in the next few weeks to equip you for the fight. It's your it's your battle box. <laughs> it's, it's more dangerous than you thought. Buckle up. And um, so that's how you can learn about the White Rose Resistance. And then if you want to uh, host this screening or pre-order the book, it's the1916project.com. Not the 1619 Project. And I'm telling you, uh, Google has, and SEO has made it difficult to get it out there. We're working on that. So if you put the 1916 Project into your Google search bar, you will come up. They'll try to direct you to the 1619 Project. So go make sure you type in www.the1916project.com. We also have an Instagram account where we have the people in the film that you'll be seeing and learning about, their endorsements and encouragement to see the film. It's 75 minutes, so most churches can host a screening. And if I'm available, me or one of my team members will actually live Zoom into the church and chat with the pastor and the people after they watch the film. Well, God bless you, brother. Thank you for all that you're doing. I cannot wait to see this movie myself, and uh, hopefully we'll get you back on soon for more updates and how we're making progress in ending this horrific evil. Thank you for all you're doing again, and hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Alex. Folks, you heard it here. Get to the1916project.com, the1916project.com. We have got to expose this wickedness, and uh, now is an incredible opportunity for you and your church to get involved. Stay with us. We'll be right back here on the Sentinel Report with much more.